Hey guys, Mike here and welcome back to another video on the channel. I'm back in the workshop, going to be doing a little bit to the Jeep, not much, but I've got a new piece of hardware on this table right here and this is going to replace the factory sway bar and the end links that I had there. As you remember before, I had to pull some pins to disengage those end links and, and free up the anti-roll bar, the sway bar, so that the suspension could articulate more and, and not transmit a lot of shock up into the frame. So this system just kind of allows me to twist a switch and I'm all good, you know, and that to me is, is massive. But first I just want to say a big thanks to RJ out there. Um, RJ is the machinist from the machine shop in the US who actually built this for me. Um, he did it for me just for the price of materials and shipping, which is super generous of him and, he, and he's obviously keen for me to try this out. If you're interested in this product, you can check his Instagram. He's got lots of photos of it. He's developing it at the moment and he's going to be selling and building these in the USA definitely have a look at his picks you can see him flexing this thing out and it, and it seems to flex very well on his setup anyway so we're going to get this on the vehicle now and then i'm going to take it out and test it and climb over some big rocks see what it does first things first i'm going to put on the hardware just get these bushings in position you can kind of see where i've mounted this forward of that sweet weld right might have to hide that later but uh, it is very strong welded around both sides there is an existing bolt hole there, by the way, so you can put at least one bolt straight through all the layers of the frame. I think you've got two layers here spot welded together, so I was a bit dubious about just welding this to the first layer. But it can't be manipulated. I've put a bar on it and tried to twist it around. It seems all good, but that, that one bolt, nut and bolt, just, just kind of give you that peace of mind, really, that it's going through the two pieces of the frame and being sandwiched. But, yeah, we'll see. We'll see how it does. He's giving me a little sachet of this squidgy lube. <laughs> I'm going to put some of that in there. Guess this is to quieten down the bushings. Oh, so now what I think I'm going to do is damage the ceiling. Put a bit of grease around here. And uh, chuck one of these big washers on. So that's up against the um, polyurethane bushing. And then we can just slide this guy in, I think. Wow, I think you're good. He's given me some plastic spaces that I can cut myself. I mean, you've got to think I've got a frame stiffener and a bumper bracket. So, you I mean, it's 12 mil of thickness, maybe 13. Pretty damn thick, so... Obviously this is all sticking out a lot further than on a stock vehicle. So I need to try and pull this out basically and kind of measure that up. So I want it about there. So what are we looking at? Oh, it's in inches. Sorry, I can't do inches so good sometimes. millimeter. <laughs> Probably not the recommended way, but uh, it will be up against a washer. And another washer, because we'll see how that goes with two washers. Kind of like these washers, you know. So RJ says this needs to be between 5 and 15 degrees to kind of be running optimally. So where are we going to be? We're going to be right up there like that. Got a feeling that's... Ah. I mean, it's basically right on the money. So we're at 14.8. Something like that. In fact, I think we're going to be a bit higher than that. We're going to be right on the 15. So I'm tempted to shorten these end links as much as I can and bring this down a little bit more, bring it down as much as I can. That's kind of where we want to be, between 5 and 15, so that looks good. That's as short as those end links can be. Um, it's just whether or not this can go up too high and hit that, which, which uh, it, must, it must do, it must do. So I think what I'm going to have to do is take the grinder and take away maybe as much of that as I can, maybe just that corner, 
So I triangulate that bracket off and, and round it off a bit, make it a bit, bit better, see what happens there. So with that cut away, we've still got quite a bit of strength there and some sidewall. So it was a bit of box section and it originally was a slider, but then I went up to 35, so I had to get rid of it. But I just triangulated it back to the bumper. It was never originally part of the design, but it was just done by me for, for strength. So that's the maximum amount of travel upward we've got on that bar. I think that's a lot. I mean, if we look at the where that end link is, it's, it's um, you know over six inches of travel there. So, oneth goeth washereth. Hmm. Washereth is loose. Bollocks. So I've measured the depth gauge on the other side against the back of this bolt here. Just pushing into it a little bit to compress the undercoat. So it's just kind of like how I'm going to want this set up and how big I need the spacer to be. Now if we're up against the or somewhere around there. So I kind of just need to shave a little bit bit off this spacer. It doesn't need to be perfect, but then I wish it was. So the install seems to be going pretty good. RJ's probably watching and he's like, what the fuck is this guy doing with my product? Gonna hit that with a bit of paint because I was whacking on it as per usual. <laughs> um, and then we can put this little end cap on. So the kit's basically installed really, really easy. Now in my case, you can see that I'm still using the old setup for the quick disconnects, but that's because I only have one uh, Imperial bolt. So this is an Imperial kit because it's American. Um, obviously being in Europe that's you know not, not something you come across every day but we do have them at work so I need to go pick up another Imperial bolt like that and then I can get these links bolted to the axle permanently because I never intend to disconnect that again. So um, RJ thanks again mate I'm gonna go out and test this right now. So I've just been doing some highway driving around 90 kilometers per hour uh, just really seeing how this thing feels. For me, it's more important how it feels when it's connected than when it's disconnected in a way, because uh, if it's not functioning really well when it's connected and it feels weird, then it's just not something that I can use really, because I do quite a lot of miles uh, on the asphalt. But we're making our way up a dirt track now. It's just like a forest road, and it's quite a well-used one, so it's, it's a decent road. Hitting a few potholes and stuff on the way kind of deliberately just to see how it feels and it's still connected because on a road like this I would leave my sway bar connected obviously because it's still a flat road. I'm still doing around uh, 30 miles per hour, 35 miles per hour so you know there's no reason to disconnect the sway bar but we're going to find a big rock, disconnect it, see what it's like. So that's it unlocked and uh, yeah I mean it just it just worked really well I, I didn't really hear or, or feel anything too weird. The Himes look like they've got room to move although what I will say is that this pin itself is actually stopping the Heim, not stopping it but, but it's going to put tension on the Heim and, and no wonder the pin would ping off actually if you look at it. Um, an aluminium spacer or a nut would be would be far better suited but um yeah there's no there's no tension on anything it's all looking really good it's all it's all clearing great as well you know this is flexing down pretty nice so um yeah amazing just to be able to twist that switch that's flipping fantastic <laughs>
The conclusion, what do I think of it? Well, I've only used it for under two hours, just trundling around these dirt roads and stuff here, but I have to say that it's functioning exactly how I would want it to. It's predominantly very rigid. Obviously there's gonna be a little bit of give here and there because that is a torsion bar. And when I take roundabouts and corners, I can't feel the roof tent going woo, like I can on the other one. But then that other one is pretty old and the bushings are worn. So you gotta kind of take that into account, but it's pretty damn solid when it's locked and it's really easy to lock too. Obviously you just twist the lever and it's done. Um, when it's disconnected, you can see it's just doing exactly what it says on the tin. I know a lot of YouTubers get free stuff and, and you know, they often shine a positive light on free stuff. But in my case, um, you know, I am $300 into that. You know, it cost me, cost me about that much. Just the other camera shutting off. It cost me about that much to, um, you know, to get it here and, and to buy it. I did get it at a slightly discounted rate because obviously I'm testing it out for him and, uh, you know, he wants some feedback from me. So he'll get that, you know, in, in time. Like when I've used it, I'm obviously going to provide some feedback. So far, it's looking pretty damn cool and it's functioning really well. So if you're interested in something like this, you can communicate with RJ. His, his Instagram's down below. You can just message him. He will be producing these kind of properly next year from what I understand. Um, he's got like a fab shop in the US and uh, he's making lots of different things, I think, for, for all sorts of vehicles from what I can see online. But um, yeah, have a chat with him. He's based in the US, obviously. So if you are in the US, then, you know, shipping's going to be a lot cheaper than it was for me. But RJ, thanks again for sending this over. I really appreciate it. Absolutely love it. I think it's really well made and it's performing really well. And I can't wait to test it out next week. But thanks again for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. If you've got any comments, leave them below. And um, yeah, thanks again. I'll see you very soon. Take care. Oh, right, look. Inner axle seal leak. That's great, isn't it? It's good to know that that's leaking. It's good to know. It's, you keep me on my toes, don't you, mate? It's like the never-ending story. Oh, look, another leak. What's that then? Looks like the hose clamp on the on the diesel line is leaking. That's great. That's really great. All right then, time to go home and pick up the little man.